I'm not a... Is it sinful for a Christian to swear, curse, or take the Lord's name in vain? This is the question that we seek to answer today on the question and answer edition of Walking Through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. A couple of months back, we did a podcast entitled, Is It Wrong for a Christian to Use Bad Language? I'm not going to repeat much of what was said there on cursing or swearing, but invite you to go to the Walking Through the Bible tab found under the media section of our website, www.eastendchurch.org. In short, yes, it is wrong for a Christian to swear or curse. Paul said in Romans 12, 14, Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. He also said in Colossians 3, verse 8, But now you yourselves are to put off these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. It is clear from scriptures that a Christian is not to go about swearing at people, cursing at people, telling dirty jokes, or really engaging in any speech that would be unbecoming of a person who is following Christ. In Romans 12, Paul said that we're to bless those who persecute us, mirroring what Jesus said in Matthew 5, and 45. Cursing and swearing would also include euphemisms or softer sounding words for these curse words, for no matter whether the words sound harsh or not, they're still curse words and thus should be avoided. Which brings us to taking the Lord's name in vain. Of course, this phrase itself comes from the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, verse 7, which reads, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. This commandment has to do with using the Lord's name in a careless fashion, using it as an empty word in times of excitement, or as a curse word. But taking the Lord's name in vain also carried with it defaming the Lord's reputation or authority. One would do this by swearing an oath using the Lord's name and then not following through. This is what Jesus was condemning in Matthew 23, 16 to 22, where he said, Woe to you blind guides who say, Whoever swears by the temple it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. He who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. If a person swore by God but failed to perform their oath, then God's integrity would be harmed among the people. Therefore, if we swear to God something, we should follow through. So careful were the Jews in not breaking this commandment that wherever the tetragrammaton Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, or in the English Jehovah is used, the Hebrew word Adonai is used, which means Lord. That is why in most English Bibles, when referring to the name of God, you see LORD in all caps. For use of the English word LORD is not simply talking about a master or a person with authority, but God himself. But as we've said numerous times in our podcast, we're not under the Old Testament law in any way. For us to find our authority today, we must turn to the New Testament scriptures. Is this prohibition about using the Lord's name in vain extended there? Well, not using the same words as found in the Ten Commandments, but yes, it is extended. We read Colossians 3, verse 8 earlier, but let's read it again. But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. James says something similar in James 2, verse 7, which reads, Do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you were called? Blasphemy comes from the Greek word blasphemo or blasphemia, which means to vilify or to speak with a lack of reverence or proper respect towards someone, especially God. So, while yes, the phrase do not take the name of the Lord in vain is not used in the New Testament, the idea is certainly present. As Christians, we should not be using God's name as a filler phrase or an empty phrase in times of excitement or euphoria, as we hear people do all the time. We should not even be substituting euphemisms like golly or gee for the name of God or Jesus, for just like swearing, making it sound softer doesn't change the meaning. We shouldn't swear oaths using God's name and then not do what we said. And we shouldn't be vilifying or speaking evil of God in times of anger or sadness. Using God's name in this way would defame the name and reputation of the one we claim to serve. Instead, Paul says in Colossians 3.17, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. To some, this question might seem like a preacher who is nitpicking, when in fact God doesn't really care. 
Not so. For Jesus said in Matthew 12, 36 and 37, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the, ju in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Our words matter, and we will be judged by them. God is holy, holy, holy. So let's treat him like such in our conversations. Well, I know much more can be said on this topic, but our time is up for now. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Matthew 10, 1 to 4, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Beyond his cross.